Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer. Welcome to Football Manager 2020. This is going to be episode one of what should be a very long series. I'm going to be managing Swansea City. Let's start off with a why. And I am going to try to keep this as short as humanly possible. But I was a history teacher prior. And I tell stories. So we'll see what I can do to keep this on point. Why have I selected Swansea City? Well, first, over the past couple editions of FM, I started a lower league manager series with a custom team, and I have risen from the National League North through the National League proper to League Two to League One, and I am on to the championship. It's carried over a couple seasons, as that series grew. It's not the same team, it's different, but it's that general continuation of that. And that's what's brought me to the championship. And why I picked Swansea, well, like I said, it's a long story, but let's see what I can do here. I'm an American. I grew up playing soccer. Yeah, we call it soccer in the US. I will try to mix Football and soccer. Oh, yeah, football, right? We have that sport that we call football here, but who plays the ball with their foot? Well, there's two players that do that. Uh, one of them still handles it in his hands. Only one is a proper place kicker on the entire squad. Yeah, I know. I know. Uh, and I much prefer this sport, but uh, we call it soccer. Okay, okay. You blame us for it, but it was an Englishman who came across the pond and introduced us to the sport. And he's the one who called it soccer. His bad, not our bad. But anyway, I digress. Growing up in the U.S., playing the sport, I was a pretty decent player as a kid. In fact, I was playing on a U16 when I was 13, uh, and each successive year prior to that, I got bumped up because of quality. The coach kept taking me with him as he moved up because his son was of a certain age and on the team, and, and I played alongside him, and I was good enough to be on the team. So they kept asking me to play up, and so I did. So uh, I had some quality, some. Uh, let's just stop there, some quality. But I didn't know a damn thing about the sport outside of what I had learned on the pitch as a player. There was zero TV coverage in the U.S. At that time, we were in between professional leagues in the U.S. The MLS did not exist when I was a kid. And I even participated in a, a clinic full of national team players for the U.S. at what is now the Timber Stadium in, in Portland. And, and I had no idea who they were then or even now. No clue who those national team players were. My first real exposure to the sport with television coverage was the 99 Women's World Cup that the U.S. won. And that was exciting. But that was that. Moved on with my life. Went off to college where a friend in college was a huge fan. And I watched the 2006 World Cup. Oh, I was hooked. <laughs> I was hooked. Then I started getting into it. Then I had a couple editions of FIFA. And at that point in the U.S., we still didn't have the TV coverage. Yes, we had the MLS, and yeah, they occasionally showed the L.A. Galaxy or the New York Red Bulls, and then that was it. There wasn't anything substantial. And then I picked up FM. And it was like, okay, okay, here we go. 
now. I, I put my boots back on in 2010. And by that point, the passion was there, the commitment was there, I was logging hundreds if not thousands of hours in each edition of FM. I've had every single one since 2009. But there was a stage in there, right around that 2006 World Cup, where the only exposure I had outside of that World Cup, because we still didn't get any coverage in the U.S., was David Beckham, Manchester United. And so that's where my loyalty went, because I had nothing. I knew a little bit about Ferguson and Beckham and that wonderful group of players that they had coming through. But that was all I knew. Technically, that is my favorite team, and that's still my favorite team. But now we get full coverage in the U.S., and the MLS has grown considerably. But that's still arguably, even though it's improved massively, it's still arguably a few levels below other leagues in the world. And it was the Premier League that, that drew my attention. But then I went through this crisis. After Ferguson retired, United went through all these changes. And it wasn't, I, I had no geographic interest and, and I didn't necessarily grow up with a team. I kind of did, but no, I was already an adult. So, I wasn't necessarily locked down to United. And we're almost to the end of the story. Almost. Sorry. Thank you for bearing with me. The worst manager in the, in the sport, in my opinion. Not in terms of quality. Just in terms of being a human. And their attitude was Josie Mourinho. And the worst day of my time as a fan was the day that he was hired as manager. And I went through a real crisis for a few years of, who am I supposed to support now? <laughs> well, at that time, and historically, other sports, quick tangent, I've always preferred the underdog. I hate the New York Yankees. I hate the New England Patriots. I support the little guy. And part of that's, I suppose, growing up in Portland. Portland Trailblazers are the little guy of the NBA to root for. It's a small market, mid-market team. Seattle Mariners haven't done anything since back in the day. 2002, it's been a while. I despise big money. So, Manchester United, right? Doesn't quite fit the bill. So, there's always been other teams that I also supported. Well, for me, during that crisis period, who emerged but the little guy, Swansea City. Small market, recently promoted, and yet they played an exciting brand. Oh my goodness, they were fun to watch. Different years, different players, different makeup, but a few key players really drew me into this team. Sigurdsson, Bonnie, Williams, great defense. I, I know he gets a lot of Flack, but John Joe Shelby, actually a guy that I really liked. And especially in, in goal, Fabianski. I know he came a little late to the party, but I like how they played. And I like that they were able to make a, a handful of stars out of a small squad, out of a low budget squad that, you know, the little guy that could. And, and then you had the added dynamic that it was the Welsh team playing in the Premier League. And, you know, so a lot of people turned their heads to them. That turned me to them. Uh, but then, 
the why them, why now? Well, they went through a nightmare. <laughs> and it was an American nightmare. The ownership change. And, and then Bob Bradley, the worst hire ever. And I, that is not why I supported this team. It almost took my support away from this team. But they, they survived that but then to be relegated the next year. And so here they are, back down in the championship, trying to recover. A year ago, first year in the championship, they finished 10th, but they've got a bloated roster. They end up letting a lot of guys go. And now, here they are, year two in the championship, a, a very, very thinned out roster from where they were. And yeah, in, in real life, they've actually started off the season extremely well. Now, here, here's the thing. I get really solid Premier League coverage. I don't get championship coverage. I watched them play twice last year. I was able to get them, uh, I, th I think one was an FA Cup match. Uh, and one was a, a randomly on like Facebook or something. Because there isn't coverage. So this is not a team that I know as well as I used to. But dang it. Gotta support somebody. By the way, I still try to support United. They just lost a game this morning, and it was ludicrous how poorly <laughs> they played. Yet they dominated most of the game. They just don't know how to get that ball into the box for actual shot attempts in the final third, unless it's on the counter. They are just terrible about that, sending the ball sideways. They don't use that probing pass. And so they'll pass sideways, 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 until somebody finally steals it. And then they go the other way and get countered. <laughs> anyway. So, here we are. Swansea, thanks for listening. That's why I've picked this team. Technical director Leon Britton. Yes, recently retired Leon Britton. Reputation, three stars. Media prediction is 10th, which is exactly where they finished a year ago. Liberty Stadium, beautiful stadium. Love that stadium. And let's see, they were 10th a season ago. They have some trophies in the cabinet. And they were originally founded just over 100 years ago. Now that short, it wasn't that short actually, lived time in the Premier League. Gosh, they lasted six, seven years. Still relatively short, I suppose. The grand scheme of things has been their one and only time in the top flight. Let's see if we can get it back there. Different squad than I know, but still some familiar faces. Definitely some familiar faces. Uh, we've got some transfer obligations, loan obligations. Out and in. Got four guys in. Team personality is professional. I like that. Hot prospect, Josh Thomas. Vanderhorn is the key player. And that's that's kind of a sad state of affairs because he was the weakest one in the lineup in the first 11 when they were in the Premier League a couple seasons ago. Vanderhorn really struggled <laughs> to, to stop the bleeding. Uh, Dyer is still here. Uh, Tom Carroll is still here. But otherwise, a very, very different lineup than the one I'm familiar with from a couple seasons and a few seasons back before they started selling off all their talent and then ultimately being relegated the next year. Now, there's a lot of different things, including uh, this part. Club vision, five-year plan. Love this new feature. It definitely adds some long-term playability to the game. Otherwise, not many changes. I know there was a lot of complaints heading into the release of FM20. Uh, the more they released prior to that, the more you kind of go, oh, okay, yeah, I see where they were going with this. But I, I didn't stick with FM19 for very long, and, and there was a reason for that. It was kind of a down year for the game. Uh, but we'll, we'll see. 
I, I'm hoping that this year we're going to bounce back and this will be a longer run. So developing players through the youth system, I do like that. It'd be nice though because I've uh, playing so many lower league manager series over the years. You don't develop the players in house very well, especially when you're moving up. So I've always had to rely on buying young players from outside or signing young players from outside that are be better talent than what I have. So I'd love to actually see players develop from within. Uh, signing young players, that's exactly up my alley, so I love that. Uh, possession soccer, I do like that. And attacking and entertaining, that's good. This is what I loved about this club and why I became a fan of theirs. Okay, so five-year plan, ongoing self-sustainability. Certainly can agree with the, the stance on that, especially as we had a very bloated roster a year ago, but they thinned it out so much that I think we should be on our way to being successful in that. Uh, status, most reputable teams. Okay, so we want to go up, not down. I certainly like that idea. Uh, working within wage budget is fully required. I'm not bad at doing that. I, I rarely, rarely go over. So we'll see if I can pull that off and maintain that. Uh, current season, top half finish. Reach the fourth round of the FA Cup and third of the Carabao Cup, League Cup. Okay, by next season, reach the playoffs. Uh, that's when my contract will expire. I have a two-year contract. Third season, they want promotion. So they want promotion within three seasons. I definitely am aiming to do it in less than that. I would love to see it within two, not necessarily the first season. But if they're doing what they're doing in real life, maybe this club is pretty good and ready to make a move. And then survive those next two years. Okay, sounds good. Uh, finally, please do not hesitate to let me know if you'd like to like any of the arrangements below to be made. Once again, I'd like to welcome Jeff Swansea and everyone at the club. Hopes that this is the beginning of a long and successful era. Uh, yes, we want to schedule the press conference and the inner squad match and yeah i'll take the advice report as well so yes to all of those those are always standard features the only one they ask you about is the match okay go ahead and get our save going now uh this game is still obviously in beta hopefully it does not break the save and force a restart upon full release here in a couple weeks. For now, we will look to just carry on straight over into the full release with this save. But again, it's still in beta. Changes will occur. All right, so we have a two-year deal with 12,500 per week salary. Replacing Steve Cooper, who just took over this year, I think. Okay, tactics has been a little bit further developed after last year. I know, I'll get into that in a moment. Club vision. Let's go ahead and accept the current vision. I do like it the way it is. A little preseason preparation. Initial preseason schedule is set to technical. I'm not sure that's the best way to go in preseason. So maybe we should flip that to. Yeah, I'll need to get in. Okay, so we're going to play our under 23s. Handful of preseason matches there. Uh, Tom Carroll has come back injured. Naughton, Mulder, Routledge. So Routledge is still here. Naughton still here. Nathan Dyer. Norfelt. OK, 
Okay, squad size minimum 15, max 99. We have 18 current. Wow, that is small. That's an 11 and 7. We could use a Harry Maguire. By the way, on the personal fan note, I say good riddance to Hazard. He was, my wife and I both always constantly talk about how hazardous Hazard is to anyone around him because if you get within five feet of him, he's going to blow over and fall down and uh, cry, cry foul again and again and again. So uh, I, I don't agree with the elite. He's got plenty of skill, yes, but uh, <laughs> oh my goodness. I was glad to see him leave the league. Okay, so we have good youth facilities. Uh, he actually has been named as vice captain in real life. So let's go ahead and accept that. Uh, I will accept this for now, but I'll go and review later. You know what, I'll pick these myself. All right, now. I've got the tactics. We've got to get into that if we're going to uh, set the tone. So why don't we get into tactics here? Now, I, I have noticed that the thumbs up fit the style that the team wants. I, I really like the Gagan press. I'm not a huge fan of Tiki Taka, but for us, it, it works. And it, I've, I've done pretty close to a control possession or Tiki Taka style to get up through the four leagues. I do kind of like the vertical Tiki Taka. Uh, but let's, let's start with a Gagan Press. Love this. That's nice. It's positive in possession. Look at that. It already starts with a basic set. I like that. Okay, well, let's go into the choosing our formation. Uh, pretty typical 4 3 3 of what today looks like. Uh, the 442 Diamond Narrow is what the team would like. We'll see what that looks like. Attacking wing backs. Kind of filling down the sidelines, but otherwise crowding the middle. Okay, we'll give it a shot. Gonna give us real strength up the middle for quick, quick movement. High intensity, <laughs> no familiarity to start out though. It's gonna take a while to get this team set. Uh, I'm gonna go with a quick pick starting out to save us some time. So what does that give us? Uh, Borja Baston, where's he from? Help me out here. Okay, he's Spanish. Uh, so definitely Borja Baston. Sure. Sure. Uh, Grimes is going to be pretty solid, and Vanderhorn is our higher rated player now. Okie dokie. Uh, Kyle Naughton, a little weak in that role. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, it's definitely hurting his star rating a fair bit. It would be really nice if we had Dan James. Of course, if we had Dan James, we'd want to be playing out. But you can see how strong we are through the middle here. A little bit weaker on, on the flanks. 
So we'll, we'll see if I need to adjust the tactic as time goes on, and we'll probably start training a second one uh, before too long. But there's a, at least a quick version. I do like to get a lot deeper into this, but I don't want to take the time now as, well, you've waited long enough already. Even that introduction alone to the series was rather lengthy. So dynamics are set. How are the dynamics? Or the tactics are set. How are the dynamics? Cohesion, not so much, but it's a positive atmosphere. We'll get there. 12 players in the core group. Only one other right now. That's that's solid. Okay. Rowledge, Ayu at the top. Dyer. Highly influential. Okay. Aldo. How we look at three star ability. Got some pace. Various forward, inverted winger, inside forward. How we doing up the middle? Not so solid. Can definitely play forward, okay. How long have you been with the team? Let's see here. Why are you still in other? Oh, you're on loan? Oh, okay. Player who just arrived on loan. Got it, got it. That's why they're in other? Okay, okay, so let's get a look. What do we have for value? Bastion at the top, okay, and he's 26. Uh, Andre Ayu is still rated among the top talent. Grimes at 23, that's solid. That's a good one right there. We want to keep him in the side. Vanderhorde's only 26. That's right. He was he was quite young. Okay, so I, I understand how he's grown and developed over the last few years. I forgot he was a young talent. Freddie Woodman, goalkeeper, rated pretty highly. Jefferson Montero. Is this the guy who was coming into the side right at the end? Let's see. Okay, West Brom... Did have plenty of appearances. Okay, I think I know this guy. 29 now. Ecuador. Yes, okay, I've seen him play for Ecuador. Oh no. <laughs> Poor little Nathan Dyer and Wayne Gretledge right at the end of the list. Mid 30s, mostly young now. Uh, we've really turned the age gap around with this squad. There was a lot of older players that were let go. I think at the end of the year, Norfolk, Naughton, Dyer, Routledge. Okay, so basically the old guard, the players that I am familiar with, are now the the old men on the team, and everybody else is young talent. Alrighty then. Alrighty. See, Club Vision, does this look? Board request right in here. So there, there's definitely a new look to the game. And there's much to be discovered. I'm seeing this for the first time, as are you. See, the stay in the Premier League was seven years. And I, I loved the rise that they had to get to the Premier League. That's pretty fantastic. From League Two in 2001 right all the way to the Premier League let's get this team back okay so Vanderhorn's captain now are you vice captain hot Tom uh, Josh Thomas is the hot prospect what do we have four star potential maybe plus one and a half current ability Looks like it's technical skills that he still needs to develop the most. 
16 year old he's a striker okay all right well we have oh more stuff the development center this is that new feature that i'm looking forward to checking out good youth development is key to make sure you have the best talent available to you gives you a complete overview of all players out on loan and in your youth teams that's the part i'm really looking forward to the loan reports yeah okay that's fine but uh seeing the youth squads and how that works it's going to be big okay so here's the induction we have overview glance at everything to do with player development at the clubs broke down into key areas to give you information when you need it okay so we have a strong u23 squad first team candidates oh i like that like that. Two and a half star center back right now. Both in the U23 squad. Individual progress with staff offering advice on players who might not be developing as well as they need to. The right path, keep an eye on it. Ah, okay, nothing wants to watch. Got it. I like this. I like this. Okay, get more involved. loan screen I like how that's broken out instead of just getting the occasional report you've got a whole section with it broken down see there are changes this year the benefits of their temporary stay elsewhere and help them to develop as much as possible. Hmm, okay. We want to make sure our young players are being suitably challenged and if there are certain individuals at the club who could benefit from a loan move, members of staff will make appropriate recommendations. Another feature I do like. Backroom team are available to handle any of the tasks. Should you delegate, delegate this? Blah, 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 blah. So overview loans. There's the under 23s and under 18s and Youth candidates are going to be handled differently this year. It's not a one-day thing anymore. It's spread over time. I don't think this picks up until, like, January. Let's see. Uh, March. Every year in March, a match is organized with teams made up of players from our youth academy to help us determine which of them we want to keep at the club. When this happens, I will alert you and invite you to attend the game. So you still have your youth candidates day in March. However, this list begins populating earlier in January and they start interacting with the world earlier and you could have players swept up by bigger clubs that you can actually later on receive compensation for before you ever even see them on your list. Interesting. I'm a, I am a fan of how that looks. Also, I think there's been changes here in the finances screen, but we'll come back to that later. 
Let's get this team report. Okay, we're not getting much there, but what about the assistant report? You get a lot more. Uh, <laughs> we have no budget for transfers. And we have 10,000 left to play with, so it's going to be hard. We're going to have to look for a free transfer, apparently, to help fill the squad. But otherwise, we are all set already, it looks like. There we go, team depth chart. Lulu, our best backup, Wayne Routledge, third best, Surge on that list. Boy, I hope they're not expecting him to play much. Uh, we got Byer, Selena, McKay. We're a little weak at that position. We could really use someone there. Okay, Matt Grimes, then Tom Carroll, then Jay Fulton. Uh, we're kind of running into the same problem here, right? If we use Grimes, then we have Carolyn Fulton, or you drop off to to Naughton. So uh, it looks like we could use one more in this area of the pitch. I think we're fairly strong, at least strong enough in defense. Got some quality choices. At keeper so I think we're looking at one more well two more through if we're calling this a diamond at least temporarily two more through the diamond oh there you go see diamond arrow all right into the staff uh, we are somewhere are we Ooh, nice. Okay, medical team is strong. Eat medical staff. Dang. Recruitment team. Not so great. Not so great. This is one area I usually do much better in, so I'll maybe look to bring in more. It looks like we could hire more. Uh, and then the coaching staff. Also some weaknesses there, but... Staff responsibilities... We have our old, it's got to be in training, right? Coaches. There we go. Whoa, it's got a new look. It has a new look. All right, well, I'm going to be handling some of this, and I'm in there already for tactical and attacking tactical. That's not my area. should be handling like defending tactical let's take a moment to see what I set up and okay so reputation one and a half stars starting out there we go so I put my attributes in key areas and trying to get my staff to handle other areas. So I'm high on motivating, strong in determination, player knowledge, and decent in these areas. Adaptability is the get a job somewhere else. So uh, this is 100% intended to be no other team. I'm going to stay with this team throughout. So I was able to read redistribute those points. Coaching, I did the same thing. I took away all the goal goalkeeping points, fitness points, and I would have liked to have kept technical, but if you want to be strong in a few areas, you've got to make sacrifices, especially when you put a lot into the mental side of the game. So strong in working with youngsters, mental, tactical, defending, maxed out, and then I put what I could into attacking. All right, so now back to the screen we were just on. 
let's see what we can do here. How do I change this? Edit coach assignments. There it is. There's the good old screen that we know and like and love. And okay, so I have two goalkeeping coaches. Got none of your 23s and a regular goalkeeping coach. Uh, Gary Richards, what do you have? Got discipline, determination, and motivating. What can he actually contribute to? Technical? There you go. Technical attacking. Yeah, three stars. Okay, good. Arch off of that. Okay, that's our fitness coach. Probably take... Well, no, because it's going to be average. You're going to want two guys on it. See fitness levels for all of the coaches. Toshak's pretty good with it. The fitness coach themselves, not great. Might look into making some changes here in the coaching staff. Uh, okay, possession, our technical coach. That's our goalkeeping coach. Okay, Marsh might be suited to that. Toshak could be suited to that. No. Marsh, no. Two and a half stars by Richards. That's better than what we're getting from Tate. Now, uh, what I should be coaching is the tactical defending, first and foremost. Okay, three stars. It's an improvement. Okay, we need somebody for the attacking tactical still. How is he only two stars? How is he only two stars? Okay, I'm gonna sacrifice. I'm handing all the tactical coaching now. <laughs> uh, definitely not the technical though. Ouch, so we are hurting on the Technical side of the attacking. Can we take you off and get... Oh, we could, but that makes a heavy load here. We could get really good technical attacking. It looks like I need to hire an additional fitness coach so that they could split the load. Because that's a massive improvement right there. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. Possession, technical, anybody, anybody. Ooh, I expected better than that. How much does that hurt the other? A lot. What if we take that out? Suddenly you become a three-star guy. When the coaches focus on one thing or two things, they're decent. Okay, so I need another fitness coach. And Toshak could probably do something really well if we... Possession, three-star. Okay, attacking tactical three-star, and then look what that would do for me here. So I need to hire another fitness coach. Priority number one. So that's giving him a heavy load right now. Everybody else, we're now three stars or better across the board. I can work with that. The goalkeeping part. If we gave them each one. That's okay, but I'm, I'm worried about the under 23s. All right, we'll take that for now. I need to hire a second fitness coach. That's the key load from there. All right, key that I take out of that. So let's look into staff, job center, nope, staff search. And we're looking for a fitness. Can we just run it this way? There we go. Staff role, coaching, fitness coach. Okay, let's set them up for obviously fitness. And we'll start there. Now, hopefully that's gonna save that. Let's come back to it. What is our fitness coach? Same determination, discipline, motivating. Determination, discipline, and motivating. So we want. Oh, there you go. Looks like there's one guy with 15s in every area, but let's lower it just a little bit. Oh, let's keep the fitness one in, at a 15. Let's see what we get. Just one. Just one. Ooh, he's a 19. That is a solid fitness coach right there. But does not have a massive reputation. have our first chance to sign somebody this year. Okay, we're live at the negotiation table. We want full time. Fitness coach. Immediate. No, I do not want a one year deal. I want you on a multiple year deal. Let's go three years. And 800 per week is what you've got to set as a base. Let's try to come down a little bit. Let's see what, what he says to 700. Okay, let's lower that bump, bump that, you know what, never mind, keep that part the same. Just lower this a little bit. Let's try 850. Reasonable start. 
Maybe we go 825. Nearly there. Go 875 now. Okay, there you go. It's acceptable. And it looks like we have our addition on its way. And that's all the time that I have for this first episode. We're going to get into our first game against our under-23s next time out. We're just about ready to roll into that. Of course, we're going to have our press conference. And then we'll start looking into player additions. But, of course, we have no budget for that right now. We have zero transfer budget. But we do have some payroll budget that is available. We have 10000 per week that's available. Not a ton to play with, but we might be able to pull in one or two more players. Maybe we need to sell somebody to get that. We've got a pretty small senior roster, though. So, a lot to do. A lot to do. But thanks for tuning in. I'm Decathlon Gaber. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.